idealism, Stalin adopts the codename Koba after a Georgian Robin Hood and begins to organize industrial workers to destabilize the Tsarist regime. He went to Batumi, which was an oil terminus on the Black Sea. And there were thousands of workers worked there. And Stalin immediately arranged uh, a series of strikes. It is here in Batumi that he gets his first real taste for blood. In 1902, his strikers confront the authorities and the police open fire on them, killing 15 and injuring many more. Stalin gets away unscathed, but he does tend to the wounded. The death toll does not worry him one bit. In fact, it teaches him a lesson he will never forget. The strike is like an epiphany for him, that he saw in the act of violence the way forward. That is how you change Russia. And that's how you progress the revolutionary movement. Physical violence is of the essence. Stalin's activities get him noticed. He's invited to meet the great leader of the movement, Vladimir Lenin. The man he considers to be the mountain eagle of the revolution. Lenin was really Stalin's teacher in the practice of terror. Lenin sees in Stalin a man of loyalty, a man committed to the cause, as Lenin defines it, and a man who's prepared to do the dirty work. Lenin gives Stalin a key mission, to raise money for the revolution. He goes to the booming port town of Baku, full of newly rich oil barons and comfortably far from the center of Tsarist power. Here, he becomes a mobster and sets about fleecing the capitalists. Stalin ran a gang that it was called something like the Outfit. They were a pretty motley bunch. And he ran brothels, more than one. He's shaking people down, he's pushing people around. And that meant bank robberies, piracy, and protection rackets. To Stalin, the law does not matter. Lives do not matter. You do what is necessary. <clears throat> this is the key Leninist principle. What is necessary at the moment, you do regardless of consequences. The only thing that matters is the revolution. <laughs> 